all right so we come to the next question which is which one of the following options is correct given three positive integers x y and z and a predicate px uh, and this is the predicate that is given to us and then we have to tell which of these is the correct option okay so what i've done is i've written this predicate again here and and then we're going to see that what this predicate actually means okay just a, just a point in this case is uh, which I think is uh, should be here is there should be I think these brackets out here like these two extra brackets should be there otherwise what happens is that this and has higher precedence over this and this sort of comes together okay and this whole thing implies this whole thing I'll, I'll come it come back to it uh, later and explain that what goes wrong when you when you don't have these braces okay what goes wrong with the options and in that case uh, none of these could be true Okay, so just for the for the time being, like just assume that there should be these brackets, and later I'll come back to it. All right. So what is this thing whole telling to us? Okay, this p x is given, and the options, if you look, they are of the form if p x being true, then this is the case, or something like that. So when is p x true? So if now you look at this whole px it's uh, what i can do now is i can divide it in i can look at px into this way so this is one thing i can look and this is this other thing that's what i can say now okay and if px is true then this since there is this and between okay so this when there is this and then this both should be true okay if p and q is true that means what P and Q K is true if and only if both P and Q are true. All right. So this whole thing is true. This whole thing is true. Okay. If we assume that, and when we have assumed this thing, that this is true, which means that so this imply this sort of tells us that X is not equal to one. That is the first thing that we get from here. That X is not equal to one. And now we'll focus on this thing okay so what is this whole thing this whole thing is an implication basically okay you see this thing this implication sign out here so this thing is an implication and this whole thing implies this so what is this thing saying what is the uh, you can we can break it like this okay this is p and this p implies q sort of thing and what is this p saying it is saying that for any value of y there exists a z okay and you can write x as the product of these two so what this is saying that x can be written as a product of y into z so what it is saying that if you are given a, a given a positive integer x what you can do is for any value of y you write it as y into z okay and what is implication p implies q is basically if p then q so if p is true then q must be true that's what it tells so if this thing is true okay if you can write x as a product of y and z okay if this thing is true if you can write it like this like for every value of y there is some z which when multiplied with y gives you x okay if this is true then then what must be true then what must be true is y is equal to x or y is equal to n so it tells you that in that case this thing becomes true okay this y if this is true if you can write it like this then what becomes true is y is equal to x or or y is equal to 1 so what does this tell you it tells you that if you write it like this then either y is x or y is 1 so what it becomes is so when x y is x what do you have so basically you are writing x as x into 1 or when y is 1 you are writing 
x as 1 into 1 into x because in that case z will be forced in this case z will be forced to become 1 because if y is x we have the product should be x so if z becomes 1 and if y is 1 then z is forced to become x so this is what it is telling you so what does it tell you that you know the only factors you can have of x are x itself and 1 okay that's the case like for all values of y there exists z for which you can write it like this so these are the only two factors of x x itself and x is uh, the x itself is one factor and one is another factor and what we know is x is not equal to one because for one also you have this condition that x is well, like one is a factor of itself and and like one is a factor of x if x is one so that's why we have this thing that x is not equal to one okay so what it gives us is that this x is a prime number because that's what happens with prime numbers and prime numbers start from two that's why this thing was important out here that x is not equal to one so that's why we we know that this option a is correct all right and then as i said what happens when when you don't have these braces it kind of gives you a minor technical flaw you can say with this statement i think they should have given these braces because that's i'll, I'll tell you what what flaw occurs okay so this was your sentence okay this was your logical sentence this was your predicate and if you don't have these braces as I put it them here then then what happens is that by default this and has higher precedence over this implication so by default you say you can say that this becomes like this because this and has higher precedence than this implication so now this thing becomes your p okay and this thing sort of implies your q and in the last case we had this thing separate and with and we had this small thing implying this thing so now what is the problem in this case so if you know about this p implies q this implication is true even when your p is false and your q is true okay this is the funny thing about this implication sign okay it means that if p is true then q is true but this implication is also true if you look at the truth table of implication in your textbook this is also true when p is false and q is true in that case also this whole implication becomes true so what happens if this whole thing is false okay if this whole thing is false and if this whole thing is true what does this mean if this thing whole thing is false then that means that both this should be false this can uh, this if this whole thing is false then you can come up with this case okay when this is false and this is true okay because even in that case when this is false and this is true this whole thing will be false because false and true will give you false all right and in that case what does this tell you this is false so which means that x is equal to 1 all right so you you also include x is equal to 1 in your case in in those situation and and by definition we know that x is equal to 1 is not a prime number because our prime numbers start from 2 okay your primes start from 2 and they go 2 3 and so on so what this is this is the logical this is a small flaw that i was talking about that x is equal to 1 becomes part of your your set of x's that you have to include okay while you should start at 2 that's why i i meant that your your braces should actually start from uh, you should have braces from here to here because if you don't have braces then you know you by default you are assuming these braces so that was the minor flaw and yeah so option a is the correct choice